Today we are gonna take a look at Manus, this is supposed to be a general AI agent, so uh, I got a bit of an early access, so today I just wanna test it out, see what we can do with this. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what people wanted to see, but uh, I made a few tests here, I don't have unlimited access, we're gonna keep it quite short. Uh, this is what I came up with, we're gonna do something on social media, we're gonna try to log in on x.com, can we do that? Can we research and write a tweet or like a post for me? Can we find some other tweets and write a summary for those? I wanna try to make a presentation, so I wanna make one on Anthropic MCP servers. Can it do some research? Can it put everything together and create a presentation for me? Include some images maybe, we'll see. And finally I want to upload a file because that is a possibility. And I wanted to read my CSV file and find out what the information is. And from those uh, content of the CSV file, create some graphs and a nice overview of what I want. So that is what we are going to try to do today using, yeah, Manus, the general AI agent. This is pretty new to me. I haven't really tried it much. I just gave it like a few tests. So yeah, let's head over there, look at the interface and see what we can do here. So this is kind of the interface, we are pretty used to this, we have this collapsing sidebar here with our sessions, yeah, and we just have a test text box, give Manus a task to work on. Uh, we also have opportunity uh, to upload files, so we're gonna try that out too. We have some kind of thing here, standard high effort, I'm just gonna keep it on standard now. Uh, we have some examples here of things you can do, and that's pretty much it. So I think we want to start on our first case and I'm just going to ask it to can you log into x.com? Let's start with that and see where this takes us. Because now I think we're going to open up, I think it's a virtual machine or some kind of uh, containerized uh, yeah, computer here. Because we can open that and look at what it's doing in real time as I will show you soon. So you can see it connected to data source, okay. You can choose to take over the browser to complete the operation. Okay, that sounds pretty good. So you can see now explaining, I can probably do like this so you can see a bit better. So if we click on take control now, you can see we pull up this window, right? And now we can kind of go to x.com. So this is probably the container we are in. So what I'm gonna try to do now is log in here on x.com. Uh, we can probably close this and then we can see what we can do with this after we have logged in Okay, so logging in that was no problem. Yeah, this is just an experimental account uh, Yeah, I've been just testing a lot of AI stuff with so yeah, I logged in that was no problem So if we click on exit takeover now, I can just type I guess uh, Yeah uh, I am logged in so now let's do what did we want to do we wanted to research and write a post for me so i'm just going to come up with a prompt here uh, what kind of post i want and uh, let's see if we can do this so let's just do uh, now i want to post a tweet that explains the term vibe coding do some quick research and post this on x.com so let's see what happens now uh, i hope my camera is not in the way now you can see uh, Manus is working, explain logging limitations. Uh, can we open this so we can view this? Okay, that's pretty cool. So the computer is inactive at the moment, but you can see, okay, so now it's going and searching on, yeah, on Google or some kind of browser. What is vibe coding? Vibe coding, so we can find a bunch of different sources here. And you can see it's doing some research, is editing a file to do. So here it kind of made a plan of what it wants to do. Visit some websites, compile information, draft a tweet, guide the user, confirm completion of the task. Okay, so it says it's gonna guide the user on posting. So I guess that means that it's not gonna post for us. But let's see what happens. So now you can see it's going into like a medium.com site here and looking at what is vibe coding. A new concept I learned today. So it's probably gonna go around, gather some information as we instructed it to do, do some research. Let's just let this run for a while now and see what we come back with here. Okay, so now you see it went into a new URL. So it has kind of a list of URL it wants to visit to gather information. And I gotta say, so far it looks pretty smooth.
And also you can see we can we have this option down here I see now that we can take control. So I guess if you see it do something that's very strange, you can just click on this I guess. Uh, we're not gonna do that now, but uh, I guess that is an option, kind of safety option they put into this. Okay, so now we kind of was finished with the browsing, so now it's gonna compile some information and draft a tweet. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so here we kind of got an overview of um, the information it found. The term vibe coding was coined by Andre Karpati in early 2025. It's from a tweet on February 2nd. Okay, yeah, that's accurate, so that was pretty good. Okay, so we crossed off the information, now we're gonna draft a tweet, okay, so far so good. Okay, so it's gonna give us some different options here. So I guess it's gonna query us to pick one, I don't know. Okay, so you can see now, uh, it kinda, I completed the research, I drafted some tweets, and yeah, basically, can we look at this now? So let's click on this. Okay, so we can see this on the right here now, that's pretty good. Uh, Let's pick option three, I don't really care, uh, but uh, I want um, this, I wanted to ask if it can post it for me. Go to x.com and post option three for me, please. Okay, so now we can see we are back on X here, so it's kind of looking at the browser. It might have to do some kind of, it has to find kind of the, what is happening. Uh, yeah, we can't open this. We can see it went... Okay, so it's looking at where I am on x.com. So it probably has to click on the post or go back to the home page to do this. Okay, so now we can see it has typed in kind of the... The... Yeah, the, the tweet into my what's happening area here. So I don't know what's gonna happen now. Is he gonna post it? Let's see. Okay, so it did post it. So <laughs> I wouldn't say that was super effective, but I guess it got the job done after a while. Um, but it didn't want to do it when we instructed it from the like the beginning because uh, it has some kind of security here, I think, that it's not supposed to post on social media. But after just telling it to do it anyway, it seems to that it can do this. Right, so we can go to this X account now, and you can see this is what we posted, right? Vibe coding represents a paradigm shift, coined by a uh, car party, the future is here. Okay, so I guess that worked pretty good. So let's see now, uh, yeah, that was done, so you can see, yeah, overall, I guess it worked in the end, but it wasn't super effective, uh, but yeah, I guess it's fine for now. Pretty cool though. I like kind of what we can see, uh, that we can see the actions down here in the browser window here, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, but let's move on. Let's do our presentation. So let's just copy all of this and just paste it into like a new session, I guess. So if we open here, click on new session. And let me just grab the prompt here. And let's do create a presentation on Anthropic MCP server, what it is, how we can use it, and why, include some images. Yeah, let's just let it run here. It's probably gonna go out, do some research, and I'm just gonna speed this up. And let's see what we get back here. And if we do some computer stuff, I might just open it so we can kind of watch what it's gonna do here. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. So it kind of goes into the terminal. I haven't seen that before. It makes a directory. I don't know if you saw that. So where it can save stuff, I guess. It created the directory, uh, MC pre presentation. Okay, so now we can see it's doing the research. It's going into Anthropics page, model context protocol. That's pretty good. Yeah, good resource for this use case, I guess. It's looking at the pages, going to the documentation. That's interesting. Okay, so you can see we have a big file here of research notes. Yeah. Kind of like that. So the next part now is going to be presentation creation. Create an outline, relevant images, slides, and delivery. So it's going to save it to an appropriate format and deliver the presentation to the user. Yeah, pretty excited to see what we get back here. Okay, so we are back in the terminal. We are going into our images directory here. And it's probably going to try to save some images into our slash images. Okay, so we are, yeah. We have this, yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good image that it selected here. So it's the MCP architecture diagram. Okay, so we got a bit stuck kind of in looking for images. So I just said, let's move on to the next step. 
because yeah, I, I would even want to wait for that. So now it's going to move on and start creating presentation slides. Uh, we collected some images, some logos. Okay, I'll focus on creating the slides. Yes, based on our reach, search and outline. Okay, so you can see it went for the MDX format here, presentation.mdx. Interesting. Okay, so you can see here it added in our logo, right? Our images from our directories. So that should be it, I think. Couple of images in our slides. Now it's gonna review and finalize the presentation. And the final step is gonna be to save it and deliver it. Okay, so let's see now. So I've completed your presentation. Uh, the presentation covers MCP service R, how it can be used. Okay, okay, your presentation is ready. Follow the link and let's go. All right, this looks pretty good. I guess this is not slides, but uh, I like it. It looks pretty good. It's not perfect, I wouldn't say that. So you can see we have the headline, we have some introduction, what are servers, key components, okay, pretty good, architecture. I wouldn't say this image was perfect because <laughs> it did the screenshot, but it kind of missed the point, right? So you can see here, we get like half of the <laughs> architecture components, tool, resources, prompts, how to use, conclusion, thank you, questions. Okay, I wouldn't say this was half bad. Uh, I kind of like, I, I think I really like to follow along here with the to-do list. And I think it did a pretty good job here on following the steps. We ran into some few issues where it kind of went into a loop of looking for images. Other than that, I would say for like an early product, this was pretty smooth. Okay, so let's do our final test. So this is gonna be a file we're gonna upload. So I went ahead, I created this API prices.csv. We have some URLs here to all the uh, API pricings for, uh, I think it's Google, OpenAI, DeepSeek and Anthropic. So what I want to take from this CSV, uh, this uh, CSV file is to actually create some kind of presentation or some kind of overview. So let's open up a new session here and uh, let's find our file. So we're gonna do API prices.csv. Yeah, pretty good. And uh, let me do a prompt here uh, to explicitly say what I want from this. So let's do, I upload the CSV file with some links. These links give you API prices. I want a nice overview and graph. Uh, graphs uh, for the price of the input and output tokens of two models from each provider. Can you create this for me? So let's just run it and see what happens. It's probably gonna do again like a new uh, a to-do list and it's gonna work from there. So let's see what happens now when we give it a file to work with. Okay, so it's looking at the URLs, uh, but it missed one. That's pretty strange. So it didn't catch the deep seek one. So it's gonna visit those. <laughs> Pretty strange it kind of missed the deep seek one. I don't know why. That was very strange. But let's see what we end up with here anyway. Okay, so now you can see it's browsing the pages. It's looking at the Claude 3.7 Sonnet. So hopefully it can gather the pricing from this. It might have to scroll here to actually find the um, 3.5 pricing. Okay, so it did that. So it found the Opus and high Q. So it's gonna be interesting to see if we can actually pick up this pricing here. Okay, this looks pretty good. So I put it into a CSV file. So we have Sonnet, high Q, Opus, Sonnet, high Q, and it has the pricing. So pretty good start if you ask me. Now it's just gonna to have to do the same with Gemini and OpenAI, and hopefully we can get some cool graphs and a nice overview. If it can complete this, I would say this is pretty useful. This is some data I sometimes gather. Uh, let's see now. So now it's going to go to the Gemini API docs to see if we can find some pricing here. Okay, so here it has the Gemini prices. To be honest, it looks correct so far. So that's pretty good. Okay, here we have some issues. You can see application error client side uh, has a cure. So it looks like OpenAI has some uh, verification here on Cloudflare. So it can't really log into this page because they have some kind of Cloudflare capture here. And I don't think it can pass this. 
but let's see if it finds any workaround for this. Okay, so it's gonna go into the browser to search, to try to find the pricing another way. I guess that's pretty smart, but it's looking for GPT-4 and 3.5. But well, let's give it a chance and see where this ends up here. It is a bit funny though, like OpenAI uh, not allowing uh, these, um, you can call it agents, to go to their website when they are <laughs> doing agents themselves. Uh, but we found some kind of pricing here, but we didn't get the latest pricing. Uh, but that's fine, I guess. Not perfect, but fine for now. Okay, so now we're gonna create a Python script. So it's probably gonna try to run this Python code here to create uh, the matplotlib. Okay, so we ran into issues. We don't have the modules. Okay, so it did go ahead and installed, um, yeah, Seaborn. So that's pretty cool. It is in a sandbox, I guess, anyway, so it doesn't really matter what it installs. Uh, now we are starting to have some combined price data here. I'm looking forward to seeing these graphs. Okay, so the model it selected was 3.7 Sonnet, 3.5 Haiku, 1 2.0 Flash, GPT-4 Turbo and 3.5 Turbo. Uh, okay. Okay, so now you can see we are generating the MDX file. We are going to use some HTML here to display the images we generated, I think. But let's just see, it's gonna deliver this URL to us now, and let's just see what happens. So we can click to view. Okay, okay, so we got the graphs here. That looks pretty cool, right? So we have the API pricing comparison, selected models, 3.7, 3.5, 2 of flash, and we have the open high 3.5 turbo. A more cost effective, uh, and now you can look at the token pricing. Uh, Two, it is a bit strange, <laughs> but three input, yeah, that's correct. And yeah, no point zero. So it looks pretty good, to be honest. It looks correct. So that was pretty cool. We can look at the output token comparison. I like the graphics here. So we have the okay, and it fits pretty well. And here we have the comparison. I'm a fan of this. I think this looks pretty cool. And I like the way it integrated this into our report here. So we have the output and the input. So you can see GPT-4 Turbo, not a very cheap model. And you can also see Claude 3.7 is not cheap if we kind of compare it with 2.0 Flash here. It looks pretty expensive, but pretty good. Uh, I was quite happy with that, to be honest. So basically, I think we have covered everything we wanted to do today now. From Manus, you can see we did three sessions. And overall, I gotta say, Manus looking pretty good, to be honest. But remember, this is a very early test and I've just pretty much basically done this. And it's not a sponsored video, they just wanted to give me early access to try it out. So I just wanted to mention that, but I don't have any biases since it's not a sponsored video. But uh, definitely go check it out. I think they have a big wait list, so it might be a while before you can try it out. But uh, my early initial thought is pretty exciting. I'm gonna keep trying it for a few days and see what else we can do with it. And if this video is, people like it, we might do a second one with some other tests. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found this interesting. And it's cool to see uh, these AI agents evolving. It's very incremental steps, but it just keeps getting better and better, right? And this is kind of what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting like a big jump, but we will get these incremental steps as long as people get time to work on this tooling. Because uh, it's kind of hard when the models ac accelerate, but you don't have time to catch up. But this seems pretty good. Uh, I think it's a Chinese company, and they are doing pretty good lately with the deep seek and stuff and too, right? So pretty interesting. So yeah, that was basically it. Hope you enjoyed it, and we speak soon.